James Kaufman, World News Report. Today, today is July 15th, 2025. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, Earth is still being walloped by solar winds created from the Earth-facing coronal hole. Now, NOAA and NASA predicted that we would be impacted by the solar winds from the coronal hole. That would occur on the 12th and 13th of July. That coronal hole is huge, and it's actually still Earth-facing. Today is the 15th, and looking at the estimated planetary KP index, it looks like we had six hours of a geomagnetic storm and six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. Now, of course, it looks worse on the college index. It always does. And the Fredericksburg Index indicates only nine hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, uh, whereas our Boulder Index does indicate nine hours of a geomagnetic disturbance and three hours of a geomagnetic storm. We're going to go with our estimated planetary index. NASA and NOAA's new baby. All right, headed over to GOES-19, solar ultraviolet imager, 195 angstroms. We can clearly see the coral hole is still Earth-facing. And that tells us that this will not let up anytime soon. I foresee the 16th and 17th also seeing geomagnetic activity. Whereas NOAA and NASA said that that would end on the 13th. You can see that the darkest part of the hole currently is Earth-facing. Headed over to our Space Weather Prediction Center, NOAA's newest redone toy. They guesstimated today would have very little plasma showing up. I think they nailed that. But they guesstimated that we would start to pass through the solar winds by the end of the day on the 13th. As you can see, they went from over 600 to approximately, well, maybe 500 on the 14th. And then on the 15th, the start of the day today, they have them down here in the 400s. That's not what occurred, as we will see when we take a look at Discover. And, well, we just looked at our KP indexes that still indicate that we're in a geomagnetic storm. NOAA says with the current wind speeds, we will take this solar wind that they're measuring with our Discover real-time solar wind satellite about 40 minutes to reach Earth. First off, we see our shields are down here in pink. Never a good thing. The heaviest plasma we've seen the spike all day is 6.61 right in here. Plasma was all over the place today, all the way bottoming out at just about zero and going up to 6.61. Of course, the story is with the solar winds. So we've had a bumpy ride. They were down to about 500, so that wasn't a bad call. But what did they do? Well, I'm afraid that they shot up to over 758, maybe 760 kilometers per second. And that would put us in a G1 or G2 geomagnetic storm, just like we saw. And they stay very strong all day long. You can see in and out of the 700s. And we have an anomaly here, 917 kilometers per second. Wow. I don't know what causes this spike in plasma here. Uh, and we always say that solar wind should work opposite as plasma, but temperature should have risen with the plasma, and it didn't. So this is a real, real problem here for me. I have no idea what occurred. That's about a 30-minute to an hour time period there. We had a spike in plasma, not to space uh, weather levels, and we had winds hit the floor. 490 and temperatures 
really hit the floor. So we're going to have to wonder what the heck happened there. And then you see your solar winds take back off. And you'll see them work their way over 700 kilometers or 710 again. I believe they work their way up to 700 here. Now, they aren't really going anywhere. That coral hole is definitely earth facing still. And let's see if we can grab that plot up there. It's going to be. Oh. There'll be some faster solar winds up the corner, be able to grab it. I would expect two more days of 48 more hours of geomagnetic disturbances and geomagnetic storms based on that coral hole still earth facing. That coral hole is still spewing solar winds at these higher speeds. We guess somewhere between 650 and 700. They did actually exceed that to over 750 kilometers per second. It is hard to believe that today is the 15th, that Noah could get it this wrong, this wrong. Whereas they didn't do a bad job with plasma for the 15th. They didn't do a great job, but they didn't do a bad job. Uh, it was all over the place from zero to six up here. Uh, from 0 to 6 up here on the 15th. But they did a pretty bad job here on solar winds. And tomorrow, well, they'll have done a worse job because I do anticipate the solar winds to continue. We'll take the last look at that coronal hole that's now more earth facing than ever. Back real quickly to GOES 19 solar ultraviolet imager, 195 angstroms. I would say that the darkest part of the coral hole, the portion with absolutely no can canopy whatsoever, is stuck right in here. And that is what we're going to have to deal with tomorrow and the next day. Remember, the sun is 93.1, 93.3 million miles away, according to mainstream science. So does take about 40 hours even at these speeds for the solar winds to arrive here on earth after being spewed from this coral hole now we've seen no flaring whatsoever today taking a look at the three-day ghost x-ray flux we saw a couple of flares on the 13th that tried to reach an m point but didn't quite make it. Take a look at the seven day. Well, we did have these three M flares on the 12th. And I don't think that those are going to be in play. If you will recall, they were off the sunspot group that was just barely coming around the limb. So I think that after the solar winds die down, we might have a moment to breathe. But we will keep our eyes open for solar flares and anything else that might cause problems for planet Earth. God bless you guys. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world.